boy, the way I came to directing was very circuitous, I think. I think these days, young, young students know they want to be directors. They know what a director is. That's a, that's a model for them. It's an idea for them. But like a lot of people in the theater when I was young, I only saw what was on stage. And the only thing theater was was the acting. It was the acting. That was the only part of it. Uh, that was visible to me. Um, but even as a child, when I look back, I was making shows in my backyard and bossing everyone around and, and even devising things and doing little scripts that I found on the floor of the library um, very early on. Um, but then I, I, and I was in plays all the time as a child and did community theater and did all the school plays and all of that. And, but I never thought I could have a career in the theater because I sort of knew I wasn't beautiful enough to be an actress. I sort of knew that. And uh, just the way people looked at me when I said I wanted to be an actress. And, and so I, I had this enormous passion for literature, you know, which was always there. The, the stories of the, in the theater were what was really grabbing me. And so I went to Northwestern in Comp Lit, actually. But all along in my heart, I, I was there because <laughs> theater school. And indeed, I auditioned for something very early and got in, not even being in the theater department, which was hot. Or I, maybe I didn't get in, but I got very close to being in. It was encouraging. And I transferred after a quarter into the theater department. And then I just was in plays and things. And then I came back to graduate school because I couldn't bear not to be in school and in that world. And I um, took a performance art class with Dr. Leland Roloff where you create your own performances. And that was so pivotal to me. And initially I started making performances that were absolutely non-narrative and had no language in them or had like one line, one spoken line in them. And I started doing more and more complex ones. And, and it was became very quickly easier to not be in them because um, that wasn't the thrill for me. It was make, making them. And I'd always loved rehearsal, but not performance as an actress. Always. I was a very nervous performer, um, but a very free and easy rehearser. And I loved rehearsal. I loved rehearsal so much, but I didn't really like performance. And it still didn't occur to me, <laughs> you know, what, what the, that job description might, you know, what job might fit that description. If you ask what the moment was where I feel I'm, I'm as a grown up and I've made it, I'm waiting for that moment. My image of myself is perpetually as a student um, and as someone figuring it out. And, and I, I realize there's even a kind of arrogance in that na naivete about myself. I mean, I've won all the big prizes, but I, I, that's not real to me in a way. And um, the thing that keeps me going in, in theater, in making things, is that I'm constantly trying to figure out um, the, the, the structure of pleasure and, and the structure of narrative, like why something's better this way than that way, and all kinds of other, other skills, like act, acting and uh, how to get a, a better performance and how to compose things better. And um, I'm, I'm always, I'm always on, on that. Uh, so I, I don't, I, I think it's sort of pathetic how I don't quite understand myself to be um, someone getting a Lifetime Achievement Award in the theater. I, you know, I don't quite, I don't quite have a sense of that. And you know, it, it, part of it is that um, I'm still making theater with the Looking Glass Theater Company, which they're mostly younger than me. I was a graduate and they were undergraduates when we met. But we've all kind of stuck together and I persist in seeing them as kids, even though they're in their late 40s and 50s. And yet to me, we're always just beginning. We're just always beginning. We're always on the edge of failing. We're always just starting. Uh, and I think that's a, that's probably a pretty common feeling in the theater, I think. You know, it's so ephemeral. Each thing disappears the moment you're done with it, and now it's time for the next one. Um, and it's, you feel like you don't know anything. <laughs> that's an exaggeration. I'm confident on certain, I'm confident on certain things, I guess, you know. To go back to how I became a director, it never occurred to me as a kid to that that was a possibility. And I think the term role model, as when I was younger, I, I think this is sort of, sort, of, sort of a wimpy term or a do-goody, goody sort of term. Um, but actually, it's really vital um, 
in that, there were no visible female directors that I'd ever seen in my life. And the two that I knew of as I grew up a little bit were Joanne Acolytus, who was repeatedly treated so um, badly in the press, I felt like, in, in gen very gender-inflected crit critical response, I felt, always felt, even as a kid, I felt that. And also, I remember Sarah Caldwell was a conductor in Boston, I believe. She's on the cover of Time magazine. I remember eagerly opening it. And then again, it was a very mean-spirited, um, you know, she was sort of heavy and this and that. And they, they talked all about her sort of personal habits. And it was sort of frightening to think about, like, standing out that way. Um, and being subject to what felt, even when I was very young, I could tell was sort of a, a particular, a, a criticism that was inflected in a particularly gendered or personal way. Um, and so I think being a role model doesn't have anything to do with like not smoking and drinking and swearing. It just has to do with existing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like actually existing in the profession. So that literally, um, you know, that possibility is a possibility. Like that, just that, that visual thing is, is, is important somehow. Uh, you wouldn't think it would be so important, but, but it, it turns out that it really, that it really is. Because even though I had been directing as a kid in my backyard, it did not occur to me to be the director. And more importantly, I certainly didn't have any kind of, of the following thought. I did not have any of the following thought, which is, I can't be a director, I'm a girl. Like that, if I'd had that consciousness, I could have stepped over it. I didn't have the consciousness of it. It just didn't exist. Any more than it would occur to me just like to jump out the window and start flying. Like it just didn't exist, as a, it just didn't exist. And so you didn't think, you just didn't think of it. It was like a world you didn't know. But I'm, I'm so all about encouraging the, the, a lot of our students who haven't thought about it to enter into directing, and not just directing, into design and into stage management. Honestly, those professions have more agency. Paradoxically, being an actor, although the word is someone who acts, who has action, it's one of the most passive professions on the planet. You kind of wait to see what's being done this season. You kind of wait to see if you're going to get that call. You wait for your audition day. You go to your, you wait to see if you're cast. You wait for rehearsal to start. Then you kind of wait in a way to be told what to do in, in the, you know, you wait for your instructions. And there's a, there's a, except for the very highest echelons where there's agency in what you get to choose what you want to be in, um, mostly you're kind of at the whims of what's being done that season and if you're right for it or not. And there's, there's not a lot of agency in it. And where you can have more agency in your life is in, is in being a director who, or a writer, or I think designers too, who have a kind of, um, I'm not saying acting isn't creative, it is, but you can start the project. Uh, y you can kind of green light yourself a little bit more than an actor can. And I think, and that's also where I really feel that diversity is a really serious issue and representation and ex inclusion is a really serious issue. It, not it in, not in acting so much to me, but actually in design and directing. That's where I feel like there's so, so much opportunity uh, to be had, to be made. I mean, on a, on a personal psychological level, I suppose what the deep fear of anyone in the theater is, is that one day the enchantment will evaporate. And um, in the way you sometimes find a relic from your childhood in the attic, that was alive for you as a kid, but is actually dead and inanimate when you see it as a growing up. There's always the danger that um, that it, it will be lost. You know, the, you'll just have done it too many times. And you, you feel that encroaching shadow sometimes where you just can't invest in the way that you have to invest for it to achieve what you you want it to achieve. There's a line in Measure for Measure, oh sir, they will discredit our mystery. And um, it's actually the executioner talking, but, but you don't want the mystery discredited because you're hanging so much importance on it and yet you know, you know it's a fantasy. You, you know it's a thing of shadows, you know? And yet you believe in its importance 
and I, I sit here and I still believe in its importance, but you're giving your life to this thing which is thrown in a dumpster every six weeks, just discarded, just gone. And that once it's gone, you can't any longer, it's just gone more than anything in the world and video means nothing. The, 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 it is, the experience is just gone and it can only live or be defended by you in a way in your own mind as having been worthwhile or beautiful or profound or whatever it is that you wanted it to be. There's no artifact that, that, that holds it. Um, it's just it's just gone. Unlike so many other arts, uh, the plastic arts or a work of music where it, it can be renewed. I mean, I suppose a script can be renewed, but never with the same people, you know, never under the same circumstances that give it its particular meaning in the in the moment, in the context, you know, in which it was originally done.